Prepare to be immersed in a journey full of conjecture and intriguing thought experiments that physicists enjoy discussing. It is quite possible that at some point in this journey, you will get lost and try to figure out what is going on. Right now, I want to focus on the specific place where the Big Bang supposedly took place. The plethora of documentaries available on channels such as Discovery have led to considerable confusion about this issue. This is truly an amazing story. Wouldn't you rather be the man who has authored over 20 well-received books on scientific topics, has been knighted by Great Britain, and has served as president of the Royal Astronomical Society? It is none other than Sir Fred Hoyle, the man credited with introducing the term Big Bang. Sir Fred Hoyle expressed his opinion that the concept of the Big Bang was foolish during his lecture in 1949. The media was particularly fond of Hoyle's statement, and they reported it as breaking news. The universe originated from a Big Bang. This coverage led to the widespread adoption of the term. However, it is worth considering whether the Big Bang was actually an explosion. And if so, how significant it was. It is important to note that this issue has its own unique beauty. The prevailing theory states that the universe emerged from a point that was tinier than an atom. However, is this statement accurate? To begin understanding the events preceding the Big Bang, let's imagine that you're situated in a room with four walls, but the walls themselves are not the crucial aspect. What's significant is that the room possesses an extension or dimension in which several objects exist, including a chair, furniture, an oven, and a cat. Now, let's heat up this room gradually, starting with 38 degrees and increasing to 40, 45, 90, 110, and finally 200 degrees. As the temperature increases, the molecules in the air, furniture, and other items begin to move faster and faster. Unfortunately, at around 150 degrees, the cat perishes, and at approximately 180 degrees, so do you. That's rather unfortunate. Let's continue heating up the room even further, reaching 525 degrees, which is known as the Draper point, where nearly any object glows dark red. However, let's imagine heating up the room to the surface temperature of the sun, which is about 5,500 degrees. At these temperatures, matter exists in a fourth state called plasma, which is distinct from solids, liquids, and gases. In plasma, Electrons detach from their orbits around nuclei, causing and molecules to become ions and molecules to become ions. This is the same type of plasma that constitutes the sun. Now, let's raise the temperature even further to 100 billion degrees, which was the temperature of the entire universe 100 seconds after the Big Bang. At this temperature, something peculiar occurs within the room. The electrons have not only separated from their nuclei, resulting in plasma, but the nuclei themselves have also disintegrated into protons and neutrons. As the protons crumble, quarks and gluons are unleashed. Consequently, our room is now inundated with quark, gluon plasma. At this stage, the reality is that no one knows what will occur in the room. It will become a primordial sea of energy in a configuration that is unfamiliar to us. As a result, Everything we comprehend, believe, and even suspect about the universe ceases to exist at this moment. Thus, if we reverse the process from here, we arrive at the Big Bang. The catch is that all the heat and energy that we introduced into the room was already present at the beginning. Approximately 13.8 billion years ago, the universe began with a specific amount of energy. We might call this state soup, which is a primitive form of energy that is beyond our imagination. We know, however, that it has been highly compressed, like this clapper, for example. It does not detonate. On the contrary, it is extremely dense inside and can do just that. The Hubble telescope gave us the opportunity to comprehend similar things, but on a universe, wide scale. These two images illustrate the universe. The left one shows the universe one billion years after the explosion, 
And the right one shows the present universe at a frame size of 93 billion light years. The visible part of the universe, also known as the particle horizon, is shown in the green circle on the right. The frame, on the other hand, is a small part of the entire universe. If you rewind closer and closer to the Big Bang, the green circle gradually shrinks into a dot. According to the prevailing theory, the Big Bang did not occur at a specific point in the universe, but rather everywhere at the same time. As the universe rapidly expanded, it became less dense and less hot. The 93 billion light year frame, which is the observable universe, will always be just a tiny fraction of the infinite universe. And the point at which the Big Bang occurred will be represented as a dot in that frame. When the provided data is applied to the general theory of relativity, an unusual phenomenon occurs. The universe assumes the qualities of a black hole, albeit one that is not situated in any specific location, but rather exists ubiquitously. This is referred to as a singularity, which poses various challenges for scientists. In mathematical terms, a singularity is essentially a gap where the equations break down. It occurs when the equations fail to produce a valid solution. In essence, whenever an equation produces a result that approaches infinity, it indicates the presence of a singularity. To simplify for those who may struggle to comprehend, one should acknowledge that the universe is boundless. At the moment of the Big Bang, it was also boundless. But the visible portion of the universe that we perceive today has reduced perhaps to an infinitely small point as depicted in various documentaries. However, that compressed space was also limitless in every direction. The reason why we are unaware of the remainder of the universe is that it is not visible to us. Nevertheless, we understand that the universe is perpetually growing and it is doing so within itself. It appears as though space is continually being generated within the universe. And with each expansion, it pushes matter farther apart. This is the fundamental aspect of infinity, and it is exemplified by the paradoxical concept of the Hilbert Hotel. Imagine a hotel with an infinite number of rooms, all of which are already occupied. In order to accommodate a new guest, one of the current guests must vacate their room. This is achieved by having the guest in room one move to room two. The guest in room two move to room three and so on, thus making room for the new guest in room one. Therefore, the hotel is not built anew. Instead, previous guests are shifted to make room for the new one. However, if the universe is expanding, does that mean we are expanding as well? Do the atoms within our bodies move apart from each other, similar to how the moon moves away from Earth and Earth moves away from the sun? The question is intriguing. When visualizing this phenomenon, imagine an inflating balloon. As the balloon expands, the spots remain stationary while the distance between them grows larger. Gravity is the only force that can counteract this expansion. In areas of the universe with a greater concentration of matter, the expansion is slower. Eventually, the force of gravity overpowers the expansion, causing matter to come together. This phenomenon is absent in our solar system, galaxy, and galaxy cluster. However, the opposite situation exists in the universe, where certain bodies are so far apart that the distance between them is increasing at a speed greater than that of light. The bodies themselves are not moving faster than the speed of light. Rather, more than 300,000 kilometers of new space is added between them every second. It adds 301,000 kilometers per second, while the photon manages to travel only 300,000 kilometers in that time. So the photon is 1,000 kilometers per second behind. It turns out that we will never be able to observe the source of light, because the light cannot reach us. The boundary beyond which objects move away from us faster than the speed of light is known as the Hubble sphere, and it is constantly increasing due to the expansion of space. Although a galaxy may be moving away from us faster than the Hubble sphere is expanding, the light it emits is still moving towards us. Eventually, there will come a moment when the Hubble sphere will catch up with that light due to its own expansion. 
It is possible that in the future, we may have the capability to experience the phenomenon of the Big Bang directly. There is a humorous notion that with a high-power telescope, one could theoretically observe the Big Bang event. However, this would not be possible to observe the actual explosion, but rather only the residual light from it. This is known as the Big Bang Echo, which is essentially a microwave hum that has been traveling through the universe for 13.8 billion years. It is also believed that this hum could be irregular and may suggest that the universe is rotating. At some point in the incredibly distant future, the expansion rate of the universe will become so rapid that this light will become infinitely fainter. If we are transported hundreds of billions of years into the future, it is quite possible that astronomers will observe only their own galaxy in the night sky and perhaps conclude that it is the only thing that exists in the universe. Well, that's it for now. And as usual, pump your brains. Bye.